My name's Gary Mulholland. I'm an author of list books, or at least that's what I found myself doing. Um, I've written one on the pop single, I've written one on the pop album, I've written one on rock movies, and this latest book, Stranded in the Drive-In, is an attempt to sum up the 100 best teen movies ever made. Um, the reason why I wanted to write about teen movies is because I felt it was the most neglected uh, subgenre in film, and also the most vibrant uh, subgenre in film and in screen fiction. And I think you only need to, to look at uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or Glee, or Misfits, or uh, Skins, or The Inbetweeners to understand that this is now being watched, this whole type of fiction, by far more than just teenagers. Everybody on the age of 85 um, will have seen one of these movies or more and formed a deep personal connection with them. And uh, reading about these 100 films is not just the story of film of the last 50 plus years, but the story of society of the last 50 plus years. For the simple fact that everybody was a teenager. Um, and you know, everybody understands that experience. And if you get that experience right, in no matter which metaphorical way you choose to do it, um, everybody will watch it. But I think the majority of films in this book will be films that everybody has seen. Rebel Without a Cause, Blackboard Jungle, um, The Wild One, Kez, um, with directors like uh, Ken Loach and Mike Lee and Alan Clark. The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner and A Taste of Honey, The American Graffiti, Grease, Halloween and A Nightmare on Elm Street, and The Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Then you've got things like uh, Richard Linklater's Dazed and Confused, Juno and Twilight, um, and the social network, that's what people think of as teen movies. I'm trying to look underneath the surface of those films and explain, well, from my perspective, why they work. You should definitely go and see those films, but not before you've bought Stranded at the Drive-In.